We're so glad you could join us for yet another episode of The Catholic View for Women. My name is Teresa Tamio, and in this program we give you news and views from, as we always say, a truly Catholic perspective. It's also great to be joined by my wonderful co-host, Astrid Bennett Gutierrez from the Vida Initiative, correct? Mm -hmm. And also Janet Marana from Priests for Life, Defending Life here at EWTN, and the Silent No More Awareness Campaign. Now this is a very, I think, um, special topic that we're going to discuss mm -hmm. because many people in our audience and many people we know can identify with this. We're going to be talking about the loss, grieving the loss of a child. And I wanted to bring this to our audience's attention because I have actually um, two people very close to me who lost a child, my Aunt Mary, uh, my cousin Kenny was killed in a car accident, and then my own grandmother lost a son, my Uncle Donald, who was actually killed in a car accident when he was four years old. And, right. and I always heard about those, the, the stories, stories of right. the pain and the hole that my grandmother said was always in mm -hmm. her heart. But um, last summer, I had the opportunity to MC an event. It was actually a fundraiser uh, for an, an awareness committee that was formed after the death of this amazing young Catholic man in the Archdiocese of Detroit. And you know how God always works. It was one of those things where a really good friend of mine, Monsignor Kwasanke, in the Archdiocese said, T, I need your help, my MC for this event, because this family's in his parish, St. Regis in the Archdiocese of Detroit. They're having this big event and the MC canceled and we need someone to help out. And I couldn't say no to him, but half of me is thinking, oh, it's a Saturday, I could be home with my husband, I could be relaxing. But because it was him and because it was an event to raise awareness, I went. And wouldn't you know it, I was completely blessed. I was blown away by the life of this young man. I remember the story when it happened. He was a recent graduate mm -hmm. of um, uh, Brother Rice High School in mm -hmm. the Archdiocese of Detroit. And he was an athlete. He was someone who ministered to young people who worked in the inner city. He was bright. He was smart. Mm -hmm. He was so faithful. I mean, he was just an amazingly faithful young man. And Monsignor told me that he was so mature in his faith beyond the years of, of the other high school students and such a great witness. And he was just out uh, swimming in Lake Huron uh, along the Michigan coastline and drowned, was, wasn't able to make it back to shore, even though he was an athlete. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the tragedy and the loss mm -hmm. was felt. Um, but his mom, Indira, was amazing. And, and even the, despite her loss and her pain, she decided that I must do something. Mm -hmm. I must raise awareness. Right. So we caught up with her. Yes, we did. In Detroit last year and did an interview, sat her down and talked to her about the grieving process and what she went through and how their faith, their Catholic faith, really saw them through and helped them to see this in some ways as a true Romans 828 situation. Let's take a listen to what Indira has to say. I would say for me in particular, beginning of that year, 2014, the Lord led me to do something that I used to do when I was in college. When I read my Bible with my daily bread, I would write down verses that meant a lot to me. I write them down in an exercise book. And during my devotion, I would go through all the Bible verses until I get to the new Bible verse for the day. And unknown to me, the Lord led me from January 1st to a lot of Bible verses, which after it passed, he asked me to go read them all over again. And as I'm reading them, I could see him talking to me. What I would tell any parent who has lost a child is to go down and be like a child to your God and ask God to help you, to give you the grace, to walk in the grace he has given you. There's no temptation God will give you that he doesn't give you the grace to overcome. But the issue to get that grace, he have to trust. And trust is a very, very action word. For me, trust meant we doing what we are supposed to do, even when we didn't feel like it. So Chris and I made up our mind that we would do what we would do, even if Ike was alive. And to us, that was trust. Once we made the first step to go on, Christ supplied the grace. But with loss of a child, there's an incredible depth, deep sorrow that you wouldn't want to do anything. You wouldn't want to get up. You wouldn't want to take a bath. You wouldn't want to brush your teeth. You will wish that if the world will end, it would be okay with you. But the Bible says all things work for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. There's a lot of um, 
moving on that Chris and I had to do. The whole summer, we tried to go to social events we were invited to go to, but God told us to go to it, even if we did not feel like going. Even if it meant before we walked into the party, we wipe our tears from our eyes and walk into the party. The more we did that, the more God supplied the grace, the more our soul catches up with our spirit. And the other thing Chris and I did was we said outwardly, God will trust you. God will love you. God will trust you. God will love you. It don't feel like that. It don't, it don't feel like God loves you at that point in time. What you have to tell him, God will love you, God will trust you. The more we said it, the more it rebound into our soul, and the more the healing occurs. It's God that does the healing. So we have to learn to trust, and that trust isn't just laying in bed and wanting to feel good, no. Trust is one of the most action word I've ever done in my life, and that means going up and doing what I'm supposed to do, even when I do not, do not feel like doing it at all. And I knew in my heart that Ike is a man after God's own soul. He loves God. So I know and I know that God just won't let my son drown. There's something in this. And that was why I decided, God, give me the grace to trust you. And I asked God, Okay, God, I accept what you said. I accept that this is your will. What do I do with my deep sorrow? He told me very clearly, I want you to say, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And I want you to say, by my stripes you are healed, and this is good for you. And it's such a coincidence that the day we had EK's memorial service, the verse for the day in the whole Catholic church, in the whole world is, my grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So right there I knew that there is more to what God is doing. And my whole life now is devoted to trying to make the young men, young women of my church, grade school, high school, to live a life like Ike. And as mothers, they say, the hand that rocked the cradle rules the world. We are God's partners. God has given us these children to help us bring these children in the way that they should go. The Bible says, Train a child the way that he should go. When he grows up, he will not depart from it. He says you should love the Lord that God in Deuteronomy with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their might. And we should teach our children that. We should teach our children when we sit down, when we sit down to eat, when we are walking on the way, when we are lying down, when we get up. So you see, God is very serious about us loving him with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our might. And when you love God like that, it'd be very easy for you to do exactly what God wants you to do. I remember asking Nikki one time, I was in, the in my bedroom closet, and I thought about all the track meets and meets that E.K. did. I thought about all the concerts, because E.K. played the clarinet for the school band. I thought about the concerts that E.K. had, that because I had to work, I missed them. And all of a sudden, my heart started bleeding again. And I was so sad, I'm like, Ike, I'm so sorry for missing all those tracks and all that meat you did, son, I'm so sorry. I wonder what you think of me as a mom. Ike, he goes, mom, we were all put on earth to play our path by God. I was playing my path, mom, you were playing your path. I don't, I don't know what says you should watch me play my path, mom. Your part, mom, is to show me God. And I think, mom, you did a very good job showing me God. And mom, that's the most important part you're supposed to play. And I say women show. I say show for women. I tell all women, please make sure 
that you, you bring your child to the point that your child fears God. And it came to my spirit one time. If my child gets a C in class, or if any of our children gets a C in class, and I'm sure we will get up, we we'll go to the teacher, we we'll ask the teacher, why did Johnny get a C? What are we gonna do for Johnny to come up to an A? We will all do that as a good mother. But if our children do not care about God, they don't pray, he don't, he's still know that they do not care about God. We don't go to Monsignor or to our priest and say, Monsignor priest, what can we do to make Johnny love God? What can we do to bring Johnny closer to God? We don't do that. But that is the most important thing in this lifetime because we are all heading home. Mm -hmm. oh. She, she's an amazing witness, amazing. and, and amazing. I, I really so um, got a lot out of that day being with that family, mm -hmm. and that, that young man was phenomenal. I remember the story when it happened a, right. a year earlier, and when I met her, it all came back to me, and sitting there that day at that event, they had a video of him, and they had images of him with the team. He had such an impact because of his strong faith. He would mm -hmm. get up and do, he would do the hours. This was a 17-year-old man. He, he helped children in the inner city. He was so, he went to mass every, he was so spiritually solid. And her point, that last point, was so important. about Teresa. what's the most important point. thing that parents Whether you can got do. to see in math or, or you right. know, what, what, where are you in your relationship with God? And how come more parents don't ask that question? Like she said, go to your priest. I'm having trouble. My child right. doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be wanting to learn their faith and I'm trying to instill Father, yes. what should I do? Right. Yes. I mean, we, like she said, you go right to the teacher right away. Oh, he got a C. How do I get him to an A? Right. But we should worry about an A with God first. Right. Care for their soul. Care for their soul. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more about how she's yes. dealing with the grieving and also about grief in general when we come back. And this is a special edition, really, of, of the Catholic View for Women, taking a very personal look at the, the struggles and challenges of one family grieving for the loss of your child and, and some encouragement on if you're going through or know someone who's going through the same thing. We'll be right back on the Catholic View for Women. Stay tuned. back to the Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along, of course, with Astrid Bene Gutierrez and Janet Miranda, talking about a tough topic, but we always want to give you a Catholic perspective and some great resources and some ideas on how to push through some really tough topics and some tough issues that maybe we'll face or maybe we know someone facing. And we're talking about the very sensitive topic of the loss of a child and how to get through pushing through that grief. Not that we don't have a grieving time, but just pushing through it. And the story of Indira, who is the mother of E.K., an amazing young man from the Archdiocese of Detroit, a graduate, uh, stellar graduate. I mean, he had full scholarship. That's the other thing I forgot to forget. He had a full scholarship to a college. I forget the name of it, but down in D.C., had big plans and his life was tragically lost due to a, um, a boating accident along Lake Huron. And instead of um, remaining in the grief, she worked through it by really offering it up to God. And she keeps referring to Romans 8, 28, which right. is all things Thanks. work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, which means mm -hmm. that God doesn't want us to suffer, right? We live in a fallen world as a result right. of original sin, but suffering will happen. It's not if and when. How do we deal with it? Right. How do we work through it? And that's what she's trying to help people no, to and do. You know, Teresa, you have to think of it, because I can think of this as a parent and now a grandmother, mm -hmm. that it's something a parent never thinks is going to happen to mm -hmm. them, burying mm -hmm. your child. You think one day your child will bury you, and some families even make plans for that. You know, they kind of get things set so that one day when it's their time, their kids don't have to worry. So to flip that and you bury a child, it, it, it's the deepest, deepest sorrow that you could ever come across, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember mm -hmm. my brother-in-law, my, my brother-in-law, you know, he passed away in his 30s, and so my brother did too, and both my mother and mother-in-law, it's it's a grief that never the same. they were never yeah. the same. They just weren't the same. So I don't think right. it matters whether the child is a little, like a newborn or an adult, adult. or a teenager. It's just the loss of the your loss. child. For It's that maternal, it's, it's almost like we were saying mm -hmm. uh, at the break, the sorrow the Blessed Mother had, the mother mm -hmm. of sorrows, mm -hmm. at, at watching the crucifixion of Jesus. Well, because she was his mother. And I think it's that mother's love, especially, to lose a child. It's, it's just unthinkable. And and the way Indira 
faced it mm -hmm. and had to push through her grief. Like she said, what's the common thing? You don't want to get out of bed. Yeah, you don't want to brush your teeth. You don't want to take a shower. You don't want to function. Yeah. You, don't, you, you want to take all party you don't invitations care the world and ends. decline them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you say, okay, Lord, I'm ready. Take me now. I'm done. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the feeling. Yeah. And then how do you push through that? It was through her deep, deep faith. She talked to Jesus. Some of us right. don't do that. If you notice, she was having conversation and saying, Oh, I, uh, Ek, I'm so sorry. Of course, I worked. All those things I missed. All she, those we should say yes. she's she's a very prominent MD in, right. in Detroit. She, her and her family are originally from Nigeria. The children were born in the United States, but right. she is an MD and, and works at a big hospital as a pediatrics ER right. doctor. So. But you know, I thought that was so important because she was doing that shoulda, coulda, woulda, which I'm sure so many of us who've lost mm -hmm. a loved one do that. And what did she say? She got I got this sense of 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 Ek spirit saying to me, Mom. I was doing my job for God. You were doing your job for God. Your job mm -hmm. was to introduce me to God, to, and you did a pretty good job. And you did a perfect job. Wow! I mean, yes. that and was such an insight to have at that moment that the Lord so actually, beautiful. you know, helped her think of that. And maybe yes. you know, part of the things that we don't do in our grief, we spend a lot of time crying, but maybe we don't talk to God enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, that's what she was doing. Yes. Having conversations, and she said with it out God. loud. She out said it was loud. very important for her to mm -hmm. say, "God, we trust you. God, we love you." And right. they would go to the social events after a while, and, and they'd wipe walk away in, the wipe, tears. Wipe away their yeah, tears she was like they a child. In. She was like a child trusting. And I love her definition of trust: is to do what you must do, what you ought to do, no matter how you feel. But that's a fruit of, of her faith. And right. my own. Um, grandmother, my maternal grandmother, she lost a son as, as a young adult. And so for her, it, she said it was the deepest sorrow. You don't know sorrow until you lose a child. So right. she carried that, that longing, that loss um, in her heart her entire life. But, yeah. but she was a woman of faith as well. Mm -hmm. So it's something that that suffering uh, united to Christ can bring about so much fruit. And she was a witness of faith to so many people. And that's what Indira and mm -hmm. her family are doing with the foundation that they started. That's They're beautiful. actually working on helping to catalyze Catechize, better catechize Catholic students. Uh, Monsignor Kosanke, my friend that I mentioned um, earlier in the program, who introduced me to mm -hmm. Indira and her family and brought me into to MC this beautiful event um, in, uh, last summer. There, she's actually the family's actually paying for Bibles and for catechisms for the confirmation students. Wow. In addition, now moment. there's this whole ministry of these kids who, who've started this run to raise money to, to help. They're calling it, you know, EK's to, to basically support EK's witness in the ministry that he had on his own. So this is again another Romans 8:28. What can I do with my grief? Mm -hmm. You know, another example of this would be the, the work of, for example, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That That's started right. by a woman <laughs> whose who, daughter was killed by a drunk driver, drunk driver, and there were no laws on the books. Believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Right. And so she took that grief and channeled it. And now that that ministry is having that organization yeah. is having a huge impact. Yeah, Romans 828, where, you know, God is bringing something good out of horrible tragedy, right. but God would not allow it. It's his permissive will that allows something, but something greater, something, some good can come out of it for other souls. And these women of faith are such great examples of that. And, and I think a lot of people um, go through this loss, you know, as Catholics, we know that Every life begins at conception, and so and 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 many pregnancies end in, in miscarriage. So many mothers, many women go through a miscarriage, are also grieving a child. And sometimes society says, "No, you you know it's, you can try but, again." And right, no, no big, big deal. deal. Right. Yeah, you 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 know. And 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 the thing is, in their heart, they know they lost a child. So out there are many women who have to be affirmed that yes, you are a mother. You lost a child, and there are ministries for women. Sure, right? there's several. Uh, one of which is back in his, his arms again ministry, and they specifically, uh, they uh, will be mentioning more in the homework. But they have a beautiful ministry where you can contact them, and they they help you with all the details. Matter of fact, you know, very often, uh, like you said, they dismiss it. But they tell you how you can get the remains of your miscarried baby, mm -hmm. how you can arrange for the burial. Yes, I've interviewed them before. Services yeah. mm -hmm. and all that. And it, it's a beautiful ministry. And the people who go through that say, you know what, I have closure now. And they give, they name And the again, baby. that was a result mm -hmm. of their own situation. situation. That they wanted to help someone not go through the same, have a That's different, right. more positive that She experience. had several miscarriages mm -hmm. and because of that, she saw there was no resources and no one was helping them. And mm -hmm. she said, I have to do something. So again, right. she didn't keep her grief internal. She shared it out and helped others. And it of course, there's the Elizabeth Ministry mm -hmm. uh, International, which a lot of parishes mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. in their parish to again help uh, people who are grieving the loss of, of children. And so. it's beautiful to see women that um, have gone through this, but have gone through the healing and um, and say when you ask them how many children do you have and they'll say well I have four children and one in one heaven, in heaven. One in heaven. Right. you know they, right. they acknowledge that but they've gone through that process of 
of healing and, and right. understanding. Don't you think too that a lot of people don't want to, for example, with women who've had miscarriages, some of the things that they say, they, they think they're, they're, they're being kind or they're being helpful, mm -hmm. but it's very hurtful to the women mm -hmm. and, to, and, and to the father as well, I'm sure. And also I think they don't know what else to say because they don't want, it's kind of like they want to keep this at arm's length because it's so painful and it's so yeah. uncomfortable, much like the loss of a child or, or someone else because it's a very difficult situation to deal with. We don't yeah. like to talk about death in our culture. Right. You know, when I right. dismiss it, but you know, it's keep it very simple and loving. You know, somebody shares with you that they had a miscarriage, you say, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll pray for you. You know, something as simple as that, but sometimes we get a little bit nervous and we'll say things right. that are awkward and can be, can be hurtful, like, you know, Try, you can try again or, you know, it was early. No, every every child, once they're conceived, is a child with a soul mm -hmm. and that person is, is a mother. Right, and they're grieving. And yeah. what I, I encourage people to do is per, just do what that mother, what you would do if that child was born. Mm -hmm. Same same response. Yes. So what would you do? Well, I would get a mass card and I would have a mass said for the baby, right? Mm -hmm. So do, if, the, if it's an unborn child, say, did you name the baby? Okay. I'll have a mass set Beautiful. and send them a mass card. Um, if they're going to have a service, go to the service. But if not, maybe come and visit them at their home. Bring them a, a cake or a casserole, just like you would pay a grief call to a friend. You yes. have to act the same Sometimes way. Sometimes just being there. Mm -hmm. I, right. I, heard a, I heard a preacher Beautiful. say once that, that you know, 99.9% um, .9 of being a Christian is just showing up. That's right. Mm -hmm. Just showing up and being there. And, and maybe not even saying anything. Look, I don't know. I, I, like if you don't have the same experience, you say, I don't know how you feel. I can't, yes. mm -hmm. I can't identify, but I'm here. If you want to cry on my shoulder, mm -hmm. if you just want to mm -hmm. talk, if you just want to sit, I'm here. Right. And, you know, I can remember, like I referred to my mother-in-law, because um, we lived together in a two-family house, and I was upstairs with my kids and downstairs. And so um, when this happened, you know, the loss of her son, my brother-in-law, she ate dinner with us every night, you mm -hmm. know. And then finally, after a month of this, she finally, she, that morning she came up to me and says, well, Janet, uh, after Mass today, because she was a daily communicant, she goes, uh, I'm going to, to the grocery store, and uh, you don't have to cook dinner for me tonight. I'm, I'm going to cook. Mm -hmm. So, like, she got to the point where she was right. ready to reengage. And that's another important point, too. Be there to help people, because when you're, like, she, like, um, when Jira was saying, when they were going through that grief, they don't want to get out of bed. They don't want to yes. cook for themselves. So you have to be willing to, like you said, be with them, call them, see what they need, mm -hmm. and help out. And then when they're ready, suddenly, like, she just suddenly was ready to get back into her routine, mm -hmm. but it took a while, yeah. you know, and you have to be there for them. Well, uh, why don't we wrap up with our homework assignments, then we can also talk about, speaking of uh, our mother, our blessed mother, we can mention our Kitchen, Kitchen Madonna, Madonna, which okay. she is mm -hmm. our... Um, Wonderful, and I want to say mascot, our patroness. No, she's our patroness, patroness for the program. Of the show. Yeah. Uh, first of all, it's a beautiful uh, bronze statue. I mean, it's nice weight to it, heavy. Uh, and of course, uh, Ashton and I she's always like to point out the beautiful symbols. Beautiful symbols. Um, the broom is for uh, cleanliness of the home, but also purity. And the keys are to keep the home safe, but also the keys of the kingdom. And this kettle is for nourishment of the body, but especially for the soul. That's right. And of course, this is available at the EWTN Religious Catalog. And I think I've told our, our viewers before, she's in all our homes and uh, positive results uh, mm -hmm. around the kitchen table. Right. And, and she's she also a powerful. reminder that, that Mary, uh, she understands, mm -hmm. obviously, the loss of a child. That's yes. right. right. That's right. Yeah. Especially Our Lady of Sorrows, too. Right. That's, that's a beautiful devotion. Well, of course, for our homework, go to our website, thecatholicviewforwomen.com, where you can, first of all, send us an email if you have suggestions for future programs. And uh, we want to hear from you. You can sign up to get our, our monthly e-letter we send out. Uh, also, there's resources there. We want you to look Go to your parish and, and your diocese and look for, to see what the resources are for people who are grieving the loss of a child. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to check your bulletin, call the parish, call the diocese, and you should do that. You should know that because even if you're not in the situation but you hear of someone, you can direct them to where there's help. So a lot of support mm -hmm. groups are out there. And, of course, we'll also have the links to learn more about the Elizabeth Ministry International and Back in His Arms Again uh, Ministry, which is their website, backinhisarmsagain.com. Spread the news about those websites, too. Yeah. And, and to remember that Indira, I think, is maybe a little bit different than most people because her faith is ex extremely off the charts. But 
she's a reminder that with God all things are possible. Right. And Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to The Catholic View for Women. We'll see you next time on The View, The Catholic View, that is. And don't forget, as Janet and Astrid said, we have a lot of great resources on our website. And we want to hear from you. Most of all, where we get our ideas our is actually our from our mm -hmm. viewers. So again, go to thecatholicviewforwomen.com, like us on Facebook, email us, give us an idea of what you'd like to see and learn more about, because we're all about helping you understand the world through the lenses of scripture and the teachings of the Catholic Church, or as we say right here on the Catholic View, news and views from a truly Catholic perspective. On behalf of my co-host Janet and Astrid, we'll see you next time on the Catholic View for Women. Thanks so much for watching.